Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and I've got another haul video for you today. I'm going to show you some beautiful bits of porcelain, some glass, um, a whole haul of jewellery. Stay tuned, I really hope you enjoy. Okay guys, um, this little haul here is from Gethley Gear. Um, the weather wasn't very good. Um, so there wasn't a lot of stalls there um, I'd say equivalent to one field if I'm lucky however I did manage to find some beautiful things and I have had a very large haul of jewelry now I'm going to start off with some beautiful porcelain now as I've said on many occasions these are not particularly in favor at the moment but they are still well, I still sell them, I still sell them all right. They don't demand the type of monies they used to. Now this one is a limited edition, 12,500 ever made. This is number 8546, uh, produced in 1991 by Colport. Now there was a time these were pulling much better money. However, it is a beautiful figurine nonetheless. Anytime they got these flowers and things and fans and whatever, anytime there's extra pieces, they were always much dearer to buy. And this one is full of flowers all over the dress, in the hair, little adornments. Really nice. And it's got this sort of lace running around it. So, that's the first figure. I'm not going to tell you the price of it because I bought three. It's a job lot. This is the next one, which is quite an absolute spectacular piece. It's almost cream way to look at it, but it's got a bit of an iridescent finish on the lady's dress. Um, looks like she's some sort of dancer with a ribbon. Or something along them lines. Beautiful porcelain. And this one is Spirit of the Dance. Limited edition again, guys. I'm only 5,000 ever made of this... Of which this is number 1461 again 1991 but this one's by Royal Worcester you can see the Royal Worcester stamp there date and everything you need on there these are as easy as they, they are what they say on the tin it says underneath what they are now this is my favorite absolutely beautiful she's holding there a little marquee mask if you like a little fan here in her hand she got all the flower adornments on her and she is quite spectacular in her ball dress. Beautiful figurine. Again, all, all these are perfect. I wouldn't buy them damaged. I really wouldn't. This one again is limited edition of only 12,500 ever made. Of which this is number 2336, 1991 again by Royal Worcester again. And it is the Victorian era. The masquerade begins. So she's off to a masquerade ball. And there's all the uh, details. So, I got three quite spectacular buys. Now, what did they cost? They didn't come in for nothing, guys. Now, I can tell you, any one of these figurines, this one, for example, 10 years ago, would have been £150. I paid 10% of that. I paid £15 each for them. Now, it sounds a lot for the uh, figurines these days, but it really isn't. Um... We'll have a little look now what they're selling for. But I got a funny feeling it'll be anything from sort of £30 to £50. And to be honest with you, that's absolutely fine. It's a good profit. Dealers these days, they, they tend to be afraid uh, to spend a tenner on something. I don't understand why. Um, I'm I'm walking around Cardiff, I'm walking around Gethley Gay and all my local car boot sales. And the minute something's up, priced up £10, £20, dealers are too scared to buy it. Um, I don't know whether there's a fear they can't move the stuff on or whether they literally just not willing to pay the prices. But if it's not one or two pound, they don't want to know. I'm willing to pay a few pound for stuff. Fifteen pound each for these. They're good quality stock. If somebody brought these in over the door, I would have happily paid twenty pound each for these over the door of the shop. But I mean by that. Um, but yeah, it, I had an example um, a few weeks ago. Um, the dealers in Cardiff wouldn't pay £45 for the best Gladstone bag I've ever seen in my life. I've actually got it listed on eBay after doing all the research at £650. Dealers wouldn't pay it. <laughs> that was a good video. If you haven't seen that one, go and have a look at that one. 
but we'll have a little look now and see what these figurines are worth. Okay guys, so we're going to start off with the Royal Worcester figurine, the Victorian era, the masquerade begins. Now, currently they're asking 60s and 70s for them. However, I have found on sold listings is four. £41, £35 and then you're moving down in price to 29 and 17 but those two are damaged. They've both lost the uh, mask and that. So they don't really count. So the price for there is 35 and 41 and to be totally honest with you, I'm going to put 55 on mine and match in with the price of the people asking on perfect examples. 55 and take an offer. So already I'm in profit. Next one was the Colport Lily Langtree figurine and there's three results 32, 26 and 25 well with that one I can tell you I'm putting 35 on her and this one there was only one result £65 for the Royal Worcester Spirit of the Dance and I'll probably put the 65 on that one I won't put any higher uh, that won't come in a box so if somebody offers me 50 55 then they can have it now I know these uh, figurines are not the most saleable at the moment, but people still like to display them. And to be honest with you, I don't understand why people are leaving them there between 10 and 15 pound. I've had a run of them lately. I've, um, I've bought Gorby 25 or 30. I'm still yet to film quite a lot of them. Um, but they seem to be coming into me regular between 10 and 15 pound. I don't mind paying that personally. Um, I'll have a look now quickly if I got any um, sold ones I can show you on eBay. I know I sell them through the shop regular. And I'll have a look if I got any sold on eBay for you to have a little look now to see the prices. They do sell, guys. And I don't understand. I just don't get why dealers are not willing to pay 10 or £15 pound for these figurines. I'm not being funny. That is really good quality for money. Whether you like them or not, they sell. Okay, I've just spliced in by there a couple of images of some of the sold figurines I've had within the last 30 days. And as you can see, I've sold quite a few of them. Some of them I don't make a fortune on, but you know what? There's been a really good profit there and they've been a really stable bit of my income. Moving on now, next piece I bought is an absolute corker. No idea what it's worth online yet, but I know what I've uh, I rated at. Now it's produced by Fenton Glass, there's the label, it's original label. It's in blue glass but it's got this iridescent rainbow finish all over the entire piece. Very much like a carnival glass finish. You can just see it there, this oily finish. The best way to explain it is if you see oil on the floor and it rains, you see that uh, iridescent. So we've got a beautiful blue glass dolphin produced by Fenton in perfect condition and it cost me £1.50. I know, the original label and all, absolutely stunning, and this is 8-9 inches long, really nice uh, bit of art glass there. So we're going to have a little look now, see what they're worth. They may not be worth a fortune, but I can tell you now, either way it's going to be worth a lot more than £2 I paid for it, but let's have a look. Okay guys, so all I have done is search Fenton and Dolphin, nothing else, I didn't want to limit the results, and I've come up with 38 results sold and obviously they done a variety of bowls and things with dolphins attached now there's an amethyst or almost slag glass version 53 pounds 39 and 20 quid postage from america they got a variety of bowls and things with dolphin handles but the one i've got is from the 95th anniversary there's a fent in aqua blue dolphin very similar to what i got 31 pounds Fifteen pounds and fifteen. Let's go see if there's any actually currently up for sale. Bear with me a second. Let's go to souls. That was the one. So this is the exact one I have. There it is. Fenton Art Glass Iridescence Blue. 95th anniversary dolphin figurine and they're asking 30 pounds for it so for £1.50 guys 
I know I got, got confused and said two pound. It was one pound fifty um, into thirty quid. That's a cracking buy. And look at the photo. It's not brilliant. I'm going to try and get a better photo with the dark background. I am. So um, nothing antique yet, but you know what? Some really good profits. Moving on now. I got two bottles. Now they're both identical. They're both Hansards of Merthyr Tidville. Merthyr Tidville being four or five miles up the road from me here so there's the Merthyr and you got Hansards and then all the rest of the details there registration marks and all the rest of it uh, what is it? aerated water so now this is called a cord bottle purely because it looked like a cord you got the dimple here for the eyes it's got a marble rolling around inside now I paid £4 each for these because I've got glass collectors that come to the shop. However, if you were lucky enough to find an original 1900s card bottle in a blue, you'll have a shock your life on prices. Unfortunately, the price of bottle green card bottles is very low. These are the deep green, so we'll have a look at these now. I'm not sure what the price will be on these. I don't think it'll be fortunes, um, but for £4 each, I've got a buyer in mind, so I'm hoping they'll buy these. But have a look at these, and I'm going to show you the price of the blue card bottles as well, if there's one on there. Okay, so we've got a bit to show you here on card bottles, guys. Um, I've searched card bottles uh, by glass, and they've come up with 70 sold results. Shockingly, a dark green one like I've got pulled £230, so I'm going to have to look into mine there. But they come in a variety of colours. That's the bottle green that doesn't normally pull money, so I don't know... It's got to be something to do with the um, the makers as well as the colours. But you can see we've dropped like a stone now to next to nothing on the price of these card bottles. Four but they in light bottle green, £17. You've got to have a rare name or a rare colour to pull really good money. Alright, so if we come across here for the asking prices, there's three there, £408. It's a dark green one and a brown one, 200 some of these pull stupid money, but don't fall into the trap because some of them are worthless. They really are, and I mean next to nothing. You can buy some card bottles a pound. The ones you're looking for are this really deep, rich cobalt blue. But I do know they are reproducing them now, or faking them, so you need to make sure you're buying originals. But I do know... Um, a few years back, I was getting two and three hundred pound for a really good dark blue one like this, uh, with a good name on it. And well, there you go. Keep your eye open for the card bottles, guys. I'm gonna have to do some research on mine. I bought them a four pound each, and to be totally honest with you, I thought ten or fifteen pound each to the gentleman that comes in my shop buying glass bottles. But I may run an experiment with one of them first on auction at twelve quid start and see where they finish up okay <clears throat> moving on um, next piece I bought cost me four pounds and it's a piece for restoration now we got um, a bone handle this is bone you can see all the veining in the bone as opposed to ivory um, would have had a brush coming out to one end and possibly something else coming out the other end um, not sure what would be the second end and you have obviously a steel shaft with a little disc so this is a 19th century corkscrew uh, Victorian and would have been a prized item in really good condition the point you has been snapped off so it's going to need reshaping and repointing it's there but just the tip of it's gone and it's going to need a new brush now what I used to do believe it or not when I used to buy these for restoration I used to buy old shaving brushes and they used to have like badger hair bristles and that and I'd cut them down and I'd re put a badger hair shaving brush mount into there and then I used to sell them like that with the original badger hair brush on the end. Now I'm not sure why this has got two ends as to what would have been on this side of it or whether it's just a bit of damage or cap or something missing. But I'm not going to bother, I'm just going to sell this as is. For £4 this is going to go into auction. Uh, well, say auction, they may go on to buy it now, but I would, um, well, I'm going to show you the prices, but I would still think in this condition, I would like to think I can achieve about £20, £25. Pounds. But have a little look now, I'll show you exactly what it should look like, 
the price, and then I'll show you some of the sole prices on corkscrews. Okay guys, so basically this is what it should look like. This is my corkscrew. I don't understand what it's got on there. We'll have a little look now if it shows us both sides. Yeah, it's got a little stopper or something on that side by the looks of it. Um, but definitely would have had just the brush. So realistically, it's a little cap missing and the brush is missing. That's all that's really wrong with it, apart from the fact they need to resharpen the point. But it is pretty much there and in you know pretty nice original condition. Look at the money they're asking for theirs, £189. It may be worth me holding on to it and putting a badger shaving brush into it. Um, the, you know, finding myself an old shaving brush, trim, shaving it down because they normally uh, mount it in wood and then uh, glue it in and there's the brush repaired. Now if I come across here, this is just sole listings for Victorian corkscrews to give you an idea of some of the prices. There's an example there of mine, again without the brush, in with the job lot of others they had £120. They're all for repair they are. Then you got a little single propeller one, um, a lever corkscrew, traveling corkscrew there for 75. Again, very similar to what I've got, only that's a wooden top, 58. And so on, you can see the prices here, guys. There's some good money to be made in corkscrews. There's another one, slightly later, because it hasn't got the disc, but they had 40 pound for it. If I could uh, just find a brush to go in there, I'd be super happy there. And bear with me. There we are. So, just giving you an idea there of some of the prices on corkscrews. But in all honesty, even if I had twenty twenty five pound for it, um, I'm happy enough for the four pounds. Coming across here just to give you a look at some prices. You got a nice barrel corkscrew here with the brush and everything. Three hundred pounds. Little scissors corkscrew there. Ninety-seven pound for another identical one to what I got. There's such a variety of corkscrews, guys, and people do really like them and collect them. So if you don't know anything about corkscrews, start learning. Because you'll find them in junk boxes, um, on car boot sales for one and two pound each. Okay guys, uh, another one of my buys before we get on to the jewellery haul was this little blow up figurine produced by Wade from the 1950s. Um, now what you normally buy are the little Wade whimsical animals and figures and they're called whimsies. This is a blow up version so it's uh, quite large and it's Jack from Jack and Jill went up the hill. Um, it came in for 20 pence. I wasn't going to leave it there for that, but what's it worth? It's probably worth about eight pounds, somewhere around the day. It's not worth a fortune, guys. Eight to ten pounds in the shop there. I have a collection of Wade figurines that I sell out for about eight pounds each. Um, I'm not going to bother researching, it's just not worth it with the value. But if you're picking them up, the larger ones for 50p in a pound, I recommend you buy them. They are out of fashion, but people still collect them what I would say is be very careful don't buy them damaged they chip easy so make sure it is absolutely perfect if you're uh, buying them some of them um, you know like Snow White and the Seven Dwarves still pull money Tom and Jerry things like that can still pull a little bit of money um, so don't dismiss them but don't go paying a lot of money for them I'm going to leave the antiques or collectibles there now and I'm going to show you my jewellery haul. It's quite expensive, well, quite expensive for what it is, but uh, I hope you enjoy now. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so here's my jewellery haul for the day. And what you see here in front of you owes me £50, which is quite a lot for little bits of silver. However, we're going to break it down now and take a little look. Now I've got a large selection of silver rings. This one's nice with a crest on the front. Got a little moonstone one there. A couple with probably cut glass to be totally honest with I doubt they're cubic zirconia. So there's some really nice rings there. So even if I wanted to and said 10 a ring, I'm already well in front on just the rings. It's a couple of really nice pendants. Uh, bracelet 
couple of necklaces here now I can tell you now even if I say an average of 10 pounds across the board except for this one this one here is a massive beautiful thing and it was one of my biggest expenditures of the lot it's Egyptian if you can make the mark out there it's Egyptian silver and it's very heavy now I paid £15 for this one on his own so there you go this is uh, 47 grams there so £15 but there is about 30 pence a gram so that's absolutely fine I've bought it in at scrap value we've got a really nice 8 inch bracelet there now let's be realistic that's going to go for 20 quid uh, this is going to go for about 50 so we're already up 70 pounds so I'm 20 pound in profit on those two and I got all this to go some of these rings are going to go for a tenner some are going to go for 20 pound or 15 pounds so one, two, three. there's 11 rings let's say it's 150 pound in rings and the 70 is 220 um, fiver, fiver, tenner 240, 250, 260, 270, 280, 290. Let's say it's about £290 per day. I got this really nice brooch that I'm going to have to test. I don't know whether it's silver or not, but look at the quality of that. you got what looks to be like a pheasant stood on acorns with the leaves behind it. It looks silver to me, but I'm going to have to test it. It was in the job lot. And I had this copper brooch of a Concord. Which again, you know, got to be talking a fiver for a copper Concord brooch. Um, so you're talking for £50 outlay, I'm going to have a slow return, but it's going to be about £300 back just on the, um, the silver and jewellery. That one is an eBay item all day long. That's eBay, that's eBay if it's silver, that's eBay. And a couple of the rings may go on eBay. Other than that, it'll all go in the shop and I'll just have a £10 section or £15 section in the shop.